I'd like to welcome our West Branch campus uh, meeting on a Saturday night and also our Alpena campus. And also I'd like to welcome uh, all our guests at the Mile campus as well this Sunday. Um, I am off uh, from church this Sunday as uh, my wife and I are going to be celebrating our 31st anniversary. So I've recorded this earlier in the week for everyone uh, on Sunday morning or Saturday night. Today we're continuing on in the What It Means, and we're going to be looking at what it means to worship the God of the mountaintop consecration. And what does it mean to serve a God that has consecrated himself to us and is asking us to do the same? Uh, We're going to be looking at passages from Exodus 19 and 20 as we do this, Um, and we're going to be talking about a little bit of of the story that's led up to it. Remember, we had... um, Joseph and, and his family came into Egypt, and, and they were raised up there. They, they grew to an immense number where they um, brought fear to Egypt. So they were enslaved, um, persecuted, death sentence upon their children. Their, their male children was made. They called out to God. God sends Moses nine plagues. Pharaoh still won't let him go. The tenth plague of death comes. He lets them go. But then he regrets it days later, and he wants to chase them down and bring them back. Uh, God has put them in a corner, or so it seemed, but he left them a way out in a time that they didn't seem to have a way out. He parted the water in the Red Sea, and they crossed over to the other side. And we worship a God who, no matter how hard times get, he is there with us, and he will redeem us and take us into freedom through him as we follow and seek to move. Last week we, we looked at... What happens when we, if we'll be silent, listen to God, and move forward for Him? Great things can happen. We can draw closer to see who He is and know who He is. And often God will work through things in our lives so He will be known. Well, today we're going to be looking at how God wants His people and what He wants His people to be. consecrated, dedicated to a sacred purpose, dedicated to a sacred purpose. On the third new moon after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai. And they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey in if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. Now, if you will keep my covenant, then you will be my treasured possession. Those are God's words to his people. If you will keep my word, if you will seek me, if you will follow my way that I am putting before you, You'll be my treasured possession. You'll be my treasured possession. Think about that. Being treasured by the creator of the heavens and the earth. As they're getting to know the great I am. They're seeing his power. They're seeing his love and his grace poured out to them. They're seeing his miracles around them. At this point, they've seen the The miracles to get out of Egypt. They've seen the miracles across the Red Sea. They've seen the the bread by day and the meat at night. 
come from the Lord as they've been in the wilderness wandering. Or so it seemed. And in this passage we see three things. God has given us purpose for every part of our lives. You have purpose in everything you do. Work, play, and everything you do, you have purpose to be God's royal priesthood and nation. We are his light on a hill. We are his hands and his feet, the salt and the light. That's what he is telling Israel, and they don't even fully grasp it, I don't think. What he is asking of them. Is a great honor but also a a great burden. To be my royal priesthood. To be my nation. Holy nation. Righteous. To live right by God. You will be for me a kingdom of peace priest and a holy nation. Think about that. Do you wake up each day and think, what can I do to be priestly today? I'm a pastor, and I have to be honest, I don't always think of being priestly. What does it mean to be a priest? A priest leads people to God, leads people into the presence of God. A priest leads people To know who God is. Just think what life would be like if every day we truly woke up and we said, you know what? What can I do today? What can I do today? So that God will be seen through me and in me. What can I do? A holy nation is the example to a lost world of what can be. If and when one follows the ways of the Lord. A holy nation. A holy people. is Not only the hope of the world. It's the example to the world of what can be. Heaven on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Love and grace lived out. This is being shared to a people who have been wandering wandering in the wilderness. They're at the base of a mountain. And they've sent this unnatural leader to go up this mountain. And there's all kinds of things going on. There's been times of grumbling. Times of regret of why did we leave Egypt? Why did we stay there and... But they're not always realizing all that God is doing around them. He's provided water to flow out of a rock. He has taken stagnant water and made it fresh by a chunk of wood simply being thrown into it at this point to these people. And he's saying to them and telling them that you will be my people. I am consecrating myself to you. And will you consecrate, consecrate yourself to me? Will you be my people? Think of being in the wilderness where you, everything that you need, because the, the, the travel party is so vast, there's no way they could hunt along their way and take care. There's no long way they could raise their, their livestock as they're going to, to be able to keep the machine of the nation moving as they are wandering. So God is providing bread by day and meat by night. If you will be my people, if you will seek and follow me. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them 
or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers, <coughs> of the iniquities of the fathers, on the, to the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing steadfast love to those, <coughs> uh, steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take. The name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. You or your sons or your daughters, your male servants, or your female servants, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is with you within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbors. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servants, or his female servants, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is in, the, anything that is your neighbor's. God says, you will be my people, I consecrate you to me, and I'll consecrate myself to you. And God gives directions to carry out being his people in the ten. In the ten commandments, Today we'll just call them the ten. We see what it means to live for God, for Him and by His way. The Ten Commandments. And we should be able to read through that and say, I can do that. I cannot worship idols. As they were described. In that passage. But what other models do we have in modern time? What other ways of wanting something of our neighbors have we created? There's a major industry. Okay, there's several major industries in the world today that are built off one thing. Us wanting what someone else has. We see it on TV. It's called a commercial. We see what they have. Oh, that would make my day so much better if I had that. Whoa, if I had those shoes, I could run so fast. If I had that shirt, I'd look so good. What commercials are built off one thing. Making us want what someone else has. A commercial car that, that makes, if you have this car, you will feel good about yourself and you will be prestigious amongst those who you pass on the freeway. You can ride in luxury. When people see you in your truck, they will know you are a man's man. What do we worship? Sometimes. Oh, we really don't. Maybe worship idols. Maybe it's not such a, a big deal for us. But, you know, for some people in, in today's world and even in the Western culture, there's people who, who worship other idols and other gods. And that's okay for them. And that's their free will and their choice. But for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. We will seek to be an example to those who, who worship wood and bronze and metal. And we'll be an example of them that we worship the God that created the heavens and the earth. And we seek justice and righteousness in His name's sake in our lives and in the lives around us. We will not judge others, but we will seek to live in the way that the ultimate judge, God, desires us to live so we could be the example for Him. What we see in the Ten Commandments is this. In the first three, they cover God and His holiness and how we're to interact with Him. How we're to revere Him. How we're to worship Him. The fourth is a gift from God, the Sabbath. From the time of creation. God created a day for us to rest. But what hap- happens, especially when we're young, especially when we're struggling, we're just trying to survive, we can find ourselves working seven days a week, never resting never praising, never being refueled for the week to come. The Sabbath was not created for man. It was not created for God, but for man. God doesn't need rest. He's holding everything together. He's the great I am. He created it for you and me. We need to rest. We need our lives to be balanced. There are times when to survive it requires for us to do every day sometimes, maybe. Maybe some of you are like, I work two jobs just to survive. And if that's the case, I plead with you to set a time during that week that you rest, that you pray, that you worship, so that you can stay not only physically healthy, but spiritually healthy. The fifth is about honoring those who give life, our mother and father. And I know this to be true. It doesn't say honor your mother and father because they earned it. It says honor your mother and father because when you honor your mother and father, you honor God, your creator. And he will judge and he will deal with the sins of our fathers. But if we seek to honor them in our lives, regardless of the hurt and the pain, and the suffering they may have caused to some. We are in God's will. Honor is something that doesn't always seem to be so prevalent in our society today. But we are called to live and seek to live a life that honors our mother and father. Have we all failed to do that? Yes. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have failed their parents at times, but we are to seek to honor them. And the last five of the Ten Commandments cover cover how we interact with one another in love. Love God. Worship and praise Him by taking care of ourselves and show love by taking a Sabbath. Show love to our parents by honoring them. Show love to our neighbor by not coveting that which is Him, not murdering, by not being selfish towards Him. 
but to love. We see, we, we see this passage, what God said, he's saying, listen, if you will live for me, if you will seek me, if you will follow the law that I lay out for you, I will watch over and protect you. You will be my possession. His val- God's valued possession. And if you're like me, you can, you can, I know the Ten Commandments, but to just like go through them and to say them, I'm always like, oh, I miss one, or I'll, I'll maybe say them in a different order. Jesus did this for us. Jesus gave the perfect summary of the Ten and how we live them out in our lives. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Teacher, what, which is greater? Which is the greatest commandments in the law? What's the greatest commandment in the law? What's the greatest rule that we have to follow as your people, God? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Get this. This is what Jesus is saying right there. For the nation of Israel, everything they know about serving and worshiping God, from Genesis until that time that Jesus was in, he's saying everything you have learned, everything you have heard is about this. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And your neighbor as himself. When you take God's word, when you take the Old Testament, all of that is about love the Lord your God. Seek to serve him and worship him with every part of your life. From how you work, to how you play, to how you love your wife, raise your children, coach the kids on the baseball team, interact with your friends and family. Everything you do is meant to be a part of your purpose as God's people. Worshiping and serving God. And you do this by loving your neighbor as yourself. We first love God. We serve and worship Him with our lives. And in loving Him and being loved by Him, we find the value in ourselves that we can love ourselves because we're created by the God of all creation, the great I am. And because of that, we can love our neighbor as ourselves. We can be servants. We can wash the feet of our servants. We can give our coat and our shirt when they ask for it out of love because we know God will provide and take care of us. When someone asks for money, we can give it knowing that God has given to us. We can give our tithe because we know God is our provider and our creator. And nothing I do can outgive him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now I don't know about you. But at some point in life, I've almost failed at every one of the commandments. Hey, my, well, does that mean pastor killed someone? I have not. But Jesus said, if we 
have had hate towards another. It is as if we have murdered him. So I, as you, have fallen short of the glory of God, have failed to worship him. But I can confess my sins. And I can call out to the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who died on the cross and was raised on the third day, who paid my debt for my sins so that I might have eternal life. So that as each new day dawns, I can leave my failures behind me and I can look ahead to the future that has been ordained and blessed by the Almighty God. And as I seek His will and seek to follow His way, I find myself learning to love God, to love myself in a holy way and my neighbor in that same way to where I can lay down my life to the Lord and say, here I am, take me. Will you dedicate yourself to the Lord each and every day? For he is dedicated to you. He is calling out to you. And he wants you to be a priest and a holy nation for him. That's why we have multiple campuses. That's why today as everyone is watching and hearing this message on the screen. And we ask the question of why. Why do we do it like this? Well, but by me getting my message done today on a Tuesday and doing this message, the church doesn't have to put out resources to bring someone else in. Because we have a multiple campus, we have campuses where the people that are being ministered to there now wouldn't be being ministered to. in the same place they are now. And we have these campuses because of this, because we believe in the Great Commission. We go and we spread the love and the teachings of Jesus Christ, discipling people on what it looks like and what it feels like and what it is like to live for the Lord. Baptizing them into the family as we did last week here in Maya with 10 people being da- baptized. We do it because we seek to serve the Lord our God by worshiping Him and Him alone, by laying down our selfish desires so that we can show love to the world around us. So my prayer this week is to be celebrating my 23rd anniversary with my wife is that each of us will learn to love as God has loved us. That each of us will seek to stretch ourselves and strengthen ourselves in the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ has sent to bind us up, to strengthen us, and empower us to be the salt and the light to a broken, lost world so souls can be saved for eternity. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your word today, Lord. And I ask that it will stir in our hearts a desire to seek your will in your way. Lord, that we will lay down our selfishness. Lord, that we will ask you to come into our lives and to sift us, to cleanse us, to clean us, and to make us whole. Lord, we thank you for the blood of your Son that has washed our sins away and made us as white as snow. Now, Lord, help us to walk and live in that righteousness that is from you and you alone. 
Not that we will be proud in our religion, but that we will be humble servants on our knees, worshiping the Almighty God who has redeemed us through the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.